In part one of our series, Outsource Silicon Valley Students in India, we saw India's growing connection to the Bay Area through the eyes of the Archbishop Mitty High School students. Joining us today are two of those students, Michelle Martinelli and Mackenzie Dar, and of course their teacher, Tim Westmiller. So, girls, I want to start off with you. Mitty has a variety of immersion programs. You could have chosen to go to South Africa, Mexico, Appalachia. I understand China's an option next year. Why did you choose to devote an entire year of your life to studying India? Uh, well, I mean, India is becoming such a huge part of the Bay Area. Not only do we have a huge Indian population, the Indian culture, Bollywood movies, uh, Indian food, you see restaurants all over the place. It's becoming such a growing economic power and such a big part of our global economy, but it's also affecting us as teenagers here in the Valley. How about you, Mackenzie? Um, for me, I really personally find the culture very interesting. I like all that it has to offer, all obviously the dress, the sari. <laughs> yes, the beautiful sari that you purchased over there in <laughs> India. How many times have you had the opportunity to wear it since you've been back? I think this would be my third, second or third. Which is still pretty impressive. Yeah, I'm finding ways to work it in. <laughs> so, um, Tim, you know, the makeup of this class has changed. It's, this is the third trip that you've done with these kids, and, and you really instituted this when you came to MIDI as part of their immersion program. Tell me about what the makeup of the class was like in the beginning as opposed to now. I think in the beginning it was mostly our Indian students who were very interested in it, obviously. Um, but as these students have come back and shared their stories, and I think they were so surprised at the fact that even though they were meeting people that were very different from themselves, socioeconomically, culturally, religiously, that they felt so connected with them. They felt a sense of belonging. The Indian people welcomed them with their open arms. And so they came back to our school and shared that with our other students. And I think it's been really contagious. So can you tell me a little bit about the makeup in terms of numbers? I'm sure you don't have numbers prepared off the top of your head, but uh, what percentage of the class would you say were actual you know, Indian students in the beginning as opposed to now? I would say in the beginning it was almost half, mm -hmm. and probably only about a fifth of our class now is. So really a growing interest in mm -hmm. the country and in the culture outside of the Indian community here locally. One thing I thought was really interesting when we were over there, we had the opportunity to spend time with some Indian students kind of very similar to you. We went to a private school in India uh, and I saw so many similarities. You were talking about iPods and what was on their playlist. What was that like for you guys to see, you know, students so much like you on the other side of the world? I mean, I'm still friends with some of those students on Facebook. Like, we had so much in common and I mean, we had all these questions for them, but we asked them, like, what do you guys do for fun? And they're like, well, we do the same things you do. We go to the mall, we see movies, and they're really, the more you look at it, the less differences there are. Yeah, I think just going with, what, with what Michelle said, it really showed us that there, we're not that different. Like, we might look different, we might have different social economic standpoints, we might be in different areas of the world, but we're very, very similar, and I think that helps understand, or helps spread cultural understanding and acceptance and tolerance. Well, one connection that we saw there was obviously the growing tech industry. We spent time at call centers. We visited Cisco right after Gavin Newsom was there. Um, now, outsourcing can be a bit of a controversial topic, especially here in the Bay Area. A lot of people feel like, you know, our jobs are going to India. Tell me about your view of outsourcing and really globalization and how it's been altered or impacted by actually going to India and seeing it firsthand. Well, my view of globalization has definitely changed. Uh, but I, after the trip, I started to realize more the role that Americans play in it and that I play in it. Uh, we have always had sort of a leadership position in the world, and we know we're leading. The question is, where are we leading to? And I think p uh, people in India look at us and our cultural standards and this sort of materialistic affluenza we have, and we're sort of setting that standard of, overusing resources, but now with things that are becoming more popular like eco-movements and metal water bottles, we sort of want to try to set that standard now. One child in America uses the same amount of resources as 30 children in India. Wow, really impressive. I, I'm always so impressed by what I hear from these students and, and just how intelligent you are. Um, we're going to hear a little bit more from you guys next week with part two of our series. Thank you guys so much for coming in. We will talk a little bit more next week about the children, about the child laborers, uh, and about the wealth gap that Michelle so eloquently talked about in part one of our series. So again, next week, part two, and uh, we'll have another group of students here talking about their experience. In the meantime, back to you.